This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. From MPB Think Radio, this is Fix It 101, the home improvement show to help you do it yourself. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pibus, ASHI certified inspector and inspect it like a girl, and licensed contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. Now, many DIY projects start with a spark or an idea on making your home better and more efficient. Or after a weekend of binge-watching those 30-minute DIY makeover shows, so not fair. But no matter where your inspiration comes from. Fix It 101 is here to help. You can join the conversation with us this morning by calling 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. How are you guys this morning? Well, <clears throat> it's a little Cricket. chilly. Yeah, I know. It's a little chilly. I, hey, Jeff, I woke up this weekend down at the pond, and I didn't have any water. Uh-oh. It froze, didn't it? It froze. Yes. <laughs> really? You, you know, that that was funny. We we were on the boat this weekend, and I got a phone call from a house that that, that we built. And um, the gentleman said, we have cold water, but we don't have any hot water. Row, row. And I said, well, it, it froze. And he uh-huh. said... It froze in the attic, and I said, "Well, yes, because you know it got down to twenty-two. Right. Uh, we don't heat our attics here, mm-hmm. right. so you know it's something to think about. If you can let a little hot air in that attic when it's twenty-two degrees, it's it's probably wise to Interesting. do. Interesting. You know, I remember you saying that a couple of weeks ago. Hey, open the door to your attic mm-hmm. and let the air in there. And I thought that sounds really." Inefficient. That just, I mean, I, well, yeah. it it no, it is. Uh-huh. It's cheaper than water damage. It's, right. it's, it's cheaper than <laughs> yeah. a, than a thirty thousand dollar water claim. That's right. true. Or now, drip your lines. Now, oh, right, or drip your lines. Now, if your pull down is in your garage, then obviously that's not going. That's work. not going to help uh, pulling that down. But you could always, you know, put your little heater up there. You know, be careful. Now, you know. Oh goodness gracious, heaters! I know. I I'm just going to drip my lines. <laughs> It's so weird. Or just drip the line. Or just drip the line. You know, it's weird if you go if you go to you know any major box store, and it, and it doesn't really matter what kind, they have a row of these heaters, and it's amazing. Every week we every week we watch the news, and we hear about one of these heaters. Oh yeah, it's it's amazing. Burn the house down. I, I can't imagine, and I'm thinking, uh, you know, because we have heaters, we keep heaters here at work. No, we don't officially. Um, <laughs> we have heaters at home, you know, little little space heaters at mm-hmm. home for different areas. And I think, are these the same ones that burn down those houses? <laughs> it just it it blows my mind all the time. Well, you you know, it usually boils down to user error. Well, so I want let, that heater way over there where there's no outlet. <laughs> The heater. This this is a this is a, a a a misconception. Okay. The gun didn't actually kill anybody. The heater didn't burn anything down. Oh, the, the pers- wiring. The person behind the gun did the killing. Right. right. The heater was 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 human error. Some somebody put the heater too close to the curtain. Too, right. You know, too I close to something. Into three extension cords. Exactly. Yeah, extension exactly. cords. So, Heaters and extension cords. Never, ever, 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 ever. No. And you, you know, know, for those of us here in the South, we we're not used to it being this cold. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> well, we don't we don't build our houses for for this uh, type for, of cold. You know, twenty degree. Uh, weather? Yeah. No, no. We build our of, homes to cool, not yeah, to heat. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah, we want right. to get it. We want to get it cool. And one of right. the things that I talk to my clients about this all the time is this: we we're building with this awesome product called Pex. Yep. P E X. Yes. And it's uh, it's a uh, by the way, in what she's talking about is plumbing. plumbing yeah, pipes. it's a plumbing line, right. and it's flexible, and it's awesome. So it can. The good news about this product is that it won't break, but it will freeze and expand. But the problem that you run into, and I was actually talking to a client the other day about this, it the PEX is put together with these little joints, mm-hmm. <laughs> and the joint does not expand. 
No, it's a little piece of brass, typically, I think. Right. Yeah. If you're if you're taking an elbow or something like that. So the misconception about, oh, you got pecs, you'll be fine. No. No. Right. No. I mean, yeah, that, there's a little, it's like a little strap of, of brass about, I don't know, three-eighths yeah, wide. Yeah, I mean, it's, that, it's not that, big. That straps the, uh, the pecs to its uh, little T-joints and stuff, different right. things that and it's going it to connect. And if it freezes to. at that joint... Yeah. Now you got a problem. Yeah. So, and and what we don't do here is, and because of our climate, is we don't insulate those PEX lines in the attic. But we can get away with that because of our climate. Right. But then you got problems whenever it starts to freeze. Getting down to 20. Yeah. <laughs> so, drip your lines. Right. Fine. And let me talk about that for just a second. Jeff, help me with this. I think it's best to drip the lines on the exterior walls. Like your interior walls are not going to be that big of a deal. But if you've got a sink on an outside wall, then go to that sink and drip the hot water on that line. Because those exterior walls are the ones that are most susceptible. And then, of course, your attic. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, I came across a little bit of news this week that I thought that was interesting. And uh, for a few years, I lived in Virginia. And when I was there, there was not a home uh, there because it was so hilly. There's not a home that didn't have a basement. Right. Everybody had basements. And something that was a much bigger deal there at the time uh, came up in a memo yesterday from the uh, Mississippi State Department of Health when I was in Virginia because you had basements everywhere. Man, radon was a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was, you know, that was up there. This, uh, you know, I don't know how common this is in Mississippi, but I did want to say that a thing is available from Mississippi State Department of Health. Uh, free radon test kits are available while supplies last. Um, from the Mississippi State Department of Health Radon Program is partnering with the Mississippi Public Library System next week, that means you know this coming week, to offer free radon home tests as part of the Radon Action Month. Uh, it says radon is an odorless, colorless gas and is second leading cause of lung cancer nationwide. Um, the test kits are going to be available while supplies last. In northern Mississippi at the Starkville Octibaha Public uh, Public Library in Starkville, at the Elizabeth Jones Public Library in Grenada, in uh, central Mississippi at the Fannie Lou Hamer Public Library in Jackson, in the Madison County Libraries in Ridgeland, Madison, and Canton, and in southern Mississippi at the West Biloxi Library in Biloxi. So there you go. If you want one of those free radon kits. Well, let me talk about that for just a second. Mm-hmm. You know, the history of radon, the reason we started figuring out that this was a bad gas was out in the Midwest. They started having a very high level of lung cancer in women. Mm-hmm. And what they found out was that these women were married to farmers and the farmers were out in the field all day and the women were at home. Huh. So they were exposed to the radon because they were in the house all the time. Interesting. Okay. So that's really some of the history. I'm sure there's more to it. That's a very simplified version of that. Well, now, radon is, um, it, it is, is, its natural source is uranium. Right. So it's not going to be good. It emanates from the ground, and then we encapsulate houses, and the gas is trapped. And so the way they remediate that is they literally cut a hole through the center of the house, mm-hmm. put a pipe in from the be- either beneath the slab or in the crawl space, and that with a fan, mm-hmm. and it liter- literally sucks the gas out and then throws it out the top of the house. Interesting. Yeah, it's a, it's a real interesting process. My knowledge base as far as radon in the state of Mississippi uh-huh. is that there is a band of, I guess, maybe uranium or whatever, that runs from Hattiesburg over to Meridian and up towards the northern part of the state. So check me on that. Uh, our listeners could check on that. But those are the areas where they have seemed to have found it. I don't know. Right. Because we have this wonderful product called Yazoo Clay. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, that's what I was saying. Nothing you know, gets through Yazoo Clay. <laughs> basements aren't as prevalent in Mississippi. Well, it but, can be under a slab. Yeah. I mean, it's the okay. same it's the same kind of deal. That gas can be there. But it, it can't get through the Yazoo Clay. Right. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> so 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 you're safe on the uh, so you're safe on the radon, but but your house may break. Yeah, but your foundation right. screwed. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know what? Let's go ahead and uh, do our first break here, John. It's time for t- uh, our first break. Uh, we want to hear from you. What's happening at your home? Also, when we return, we're going to share with you uh, a way you should never wash your bath mats. Why you should never do that in your washing machine. We'll talk huh. about that when we come back. I'm interested in that. Here we go. Hello, I'm Dr. Nancy Lotridge anderson president of New Perspectives, a fee-only financial advising firm and co-host of Money Talks. For over 10 years, Money Talks has been answering your personal financial questions and sharing knowledge about money management. Money Talks can be heard Tuesdays at 9 a.m. on MPB Think Radio. Podcasts can be found on our website, money.mpbonline.org, or on your smart device's podcasting platform. Hey, you're listening to Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pipus, ASHI Certified Inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl, and Licensed Contractor Jeff Simmons from Houseworks. You can join the conversation this morning by calling 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. Now, we went into the break with a cliffhanger. Did you guys hear that? Yeah, I need to know about my bath mat. That's right. Yeah, this is this is a really crazy article I came across the other day, and and it just you know as I'm looking around at stuff maybe for the show or whatever, every once in a while I'll come across something that just feels like it has a lot of value uh, for our listeners. But okay, so an article was written in uh, I saw this in the Family Handyman, which is a website online. They've helped us out on this show a lot. It's a it's a good website. We've actually been in their top. 10 podcasts before. Um, however, Scott the Fix-It Guy was the writer of this article. And why shouldn't I put my bathroom mat in, in the washer? He says uh, there's two reasons. Number one, it can ruin the drain motor. Ruin it. Bathroom mats often have the rubbery backing. Mm-hmm. It disintegrates in the wash cycle. The small rubber pieces then block the drain pump by clogging its motor and drain line. Often the drain motor needs to be replaced. This repair averages 240 for parts and labor. Even bathroom mats without a rubber backing can affect that drain motor. Long fibers in some mats break off during the wash cycle and clog the drain. Number two, it can ruin the spin basket bearing. And this is the one that gets all of us. When I, when I explain this one, this is going to get everybody, okay? The rear bearing that supports the spin basket takes the brunt of the damage from a heavy bathroom mat. You know, think about what a bathroom mat is designed to do. Uh, uh, absorb water. water. Right, mm-hmm. exactly. Okay, the great centripetal force generated by the spin cycle, when the bearing fails, the fix can cost 500 bucks. There's also a spider bracket that holds up the spin bracket, which often breaks due to the increased weight. The spider bracket repair is also around 500 bucks. So, how should you clean your bathroom mats? Um, uh, this guy suggests that you uh, take them to a coin laundry. The powerful, robust machines uh, wash heavy items without being taxed. Whereas your machine, if you do it, it says if you plan on washing heavy items, that you may you must be prepared to buy a new washer up to every two or three years. And he said, here are the items that are too bulky or too heavy for at-home washing machines, just regular consumer brand washing machines like we buy. Oh, wait a minute. Let me guess. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because you, hey, just play the hits. Listen, you know them. Listen, I, I've got a better way to wash the uh, bath mat, too. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Hang so, on. Before you get into the pressure washing. The washing. things you shouldn't put in right. your washing machine. Things oh, yeah. you shouldn't put in your washing machine. Uh, your bed cover. You, you, yeah. Number one, comforter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's comforter. just it's just too big and bulky. Right. Yeah. Number two, sleeping bags. Yeah. I agree number with three. That. Yeah. Number three. And this hurt my soul. Dog beds. Dog beds. Uh, they just absorb too yeah, much. They're yeah. too big. And uh, drapes. <clears throat> uh, for those of you that have those. Uh, weighted blankets, which became really popular a while back, mm-hmm. and a lot of people getting weighted blankets. Do not put that in your washing machine. Uh, and of course, as it says, rugs. 
But I, one that I know that my home has been guilty of for many years is that comforter. Sure. We, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. and, and but they say you really should take it to one of the one of the one of the quarter laundries kind of thing and run it there because it's big, tough and heavy and made to take that thing. And it's not going to hurt that machine. But over time, it says it will wear all your machines out. Well, something else you could do. <clears throat> what I did is because I've got four pets at home mm-hmm. and I've got the comforters and I've got I've got all that stuff is that when my washing machine went out I just researched one that could wash those things well, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, look, I just, that's the washing machine I got. I, I think an easier way to do your bath mat mm-hmm. is take it out on the driveway right. with, with a water hose. What about your power washer? Well, yeah. <laughs> that's you, Jeff's you, use sure. for the power washer. You, you, you can do that. T- take, a, take a soft brush <laughs> with with uh, some some detergent and, right. and, and, and um, do your bath mat j- just like you would do a – a uh, oriental rug. That, that's how we clean oriental rugs. Let me tell you, my so, daughter has figured this out. She's she's got a rug in her room that will get funky, right? Well, what she'll do, she's figured this out. She takes it to the trampoline. We have a trampoline. Yep. Yeah. Puts it on top of the trampoline. Oh, yeah. Sure. Turns yeah. on the high pressure water hose. Yeah. And you know, of course, and the water it works. Just, it's perfect. That's right. Yeah. I never and, even thought and, of it. It's great. And it can dry right there as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's so, like having a instead of a trampoline, it's just the dryer for hey, the. Yeah, that, yeah. Could, that could be that could be her next uh, um, career move. Right. Business, yeah, yeah there, cleaning yeah. rugs on the trampoline. Cleaning rugs. Yeah, <laughs> all the heavy stuff that can't go on the wall. There then, you go. There you go. <laughs> right. Hey, oh, we got an email here. I want to get to real quick. Okay, greetings. I love your show. Always so informative. This, is, this may be for us. I would like to create a rock garden in the front of my home, but I need some stones that are heavy enough to withstand a blower to remove pine straw without moving the rocks. Yeah, <laughs> live that. I didn't live that dream before. Uh, <laughs> we have seven pine trees in the front yard, so it will be necessary to use the blower often. Where do I find decorative yet functional rocks? Thank you for your help. Uh, help. Lamelody. River Rock. Arkansas. Yeah, Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, there, there's yeah, all kinds no, of places right. in town Absolutely. if you can get it. Yeah. 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 I, if you kinds. go if you go by there's a um and sometimes, sometimes some of the landscape places will have them. Uh, sure. and what I mean by you know, the, the, the plant places and that kind of thing. That's right. But but you'll also find I've seen a few of these where, where there are there are places in, in in many towns around. I'm not sure where you were uh, sending from here, but in many towns around, it's just it's it it's just quarried stones and 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 and. I mean, there's a couple of places around wanna, Jackson. The, uh, uh, if if you put a five pound stone down there, uh huh, you won't be able to pick up the blower that can blow that five pound. <laughs> That's stone. true. That's true. I promise you. <laughs> I agree. So, <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Let's say, okay, let's say this this person, the uh, melody wants, let's say. The, enough to fill up an F one fifty, right? Enough to fill up a the back of a regular truck, so of rocks. What does that cost me? I've never done that before. Well, let's see. We are purchasing uh, limestone, and it just went up for right. our temporary driveways. I think we're, and I think it's fourteen tons, and there it's about seven hundred dollars. For fourteen uh, tons of rocks, I, I think, but that's a driveway. You won't need nearly that much. Well, well it's not really a driveway. It's a, it's a temp entrance right, into yeah. our. But and, and right, you won't need that much. But that's not really what she needs. No, she's looking no. at a bigger, she more decorative some, rock. She needs some 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 river rock. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you can go because I've actually purchased some. You can go on the way that they package this is that it's on a very heavy duty pallet Mm -hmm. and then there's chicken wire i've seen that yeah i've seen that and the rocks are so high and so wide and that's what you're purchasing and they will price that out for you okay and i can think of several places off the top of my head around jackson i'm not going to mention them because it may be different for her right but you can basically google landscape rock and that's going to come up now be very careful (laughs) 
I think I've told the story on here before about how that's loaded, and you you talk about an F one fifty. You better have uh, some suspension on the right, truck. Right? Yeah. I'll, you I'll put say, those rock in the back of something it's not supposed to be in. You're going to blow some tires out. <laughs> right. Um, and it's interesting. I know that that your your bigger national uh, box home stores typically don't have that sort of thing. However, there are some independents around the state. And I know that I go to uh, one in central Mississippi regularly that does have that sort of material. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I call it, and my, I call it the big green store, but it's it's one of my favorites because it carries the bigger material and you can buy you know, giant bales of sand or whatever it is that you need. You know? I would look at having it delivered. If you're going to get a lot, uh-huh. and I've done that quite often, mm-hmm. and I just have them bring it to the house. And, and then do they I just dump it, it on there. the front lawn? No, you can. If you'll meet them there, they'll put mm-hmm. it where you want it to be. Okay. I mean, I've, I usually have mine put at the end of the driveway so I can. I've brought my Polaris home, my little EV, and it's got a little dump truck on the back of it. I'm getting ready to do some of that myself. So right. I just back it up to that and put what I want on there and then take it to the part of the yard where I want it. Huh. All right. Well, cool. That's uh, a good answer for uh, Lamelody. Very cool. Number to call is 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Or, of course, you can send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. Let's keep going to an email here. My bathroom sink gurgles when the uh, tub drains, and the tub will gurgle when the sink drains. The drain pipes meet in a Y under the house near the toilet drain. There's a four-inch vent pipe. Is there anything I can do to fix the gurgle? Thank you. Is the vent clogged? That's what I was thinking, yeah. the vent. Sure you know, what it sounds like. It sounds like it's a venting problem. Really? That probably, and what folks don't understand, and I, my buddy up in Canada had this problem. He had these pesky little squirrels that would drop pine cones down his vents. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. No yeah. way. And yeah. so, and he found out because the toilet was gurgling. That's right. That's right. Really? Mm-hmm. So a plumber's going to have to maybe get up there and look down in it and see what's going on. Well, let, let me, yeah, let see, me see. Here, here's, here's a way to think of a vent. If that vent was not connected, uh-huh. that sink is not going to drain. Oh, sure. It's, okay, it's got, yeah. It's got to almost burp like a baby. Mm-hmm. It's right. Got to, it's it, that it's got a vent. Right. It's so that seventh grade the vent, science thing yeah, where the you turn the cup very, upside down. Is, is very important. Well, let yeah. me ask: is it's, uh, is since he has uh, what is apparently at least a crawl space? He's he's in a he, he's on a conventional because he says right. pipe meets in the Y under the toilet. Is this something that he could look to clean out? It's it's not under the house. The problem is the vent. Uh-huh. Um, which is going to come out the top of the house. So it would take a, a, a plumber to get to that, or you yeah, know, we we never suggest you get up on a roof to do anything. Yeah, and that would be that's roof work okay. there to get okay. up there and kind of make sure that that's okay. Another thing you can do, and I know this is going to sound crazy, but you could try to take if you've got a clog in that drain that's right at the vent, right. Then that could be causing it as well. So okay. you could try snaking your drains at your sink and at your toilet. Or what was it? The toilet or the tub? The tub. The tub, I think. Yeah. Try yeah, snaking those drains. You can also take really, really to boil you some water. <laughs> right. Several pots of water and pour your water. Get some rags. Get some, yeah. And pour. No, we're not. We're not birthing a baby. Right. <laughs> so we're gonna. We're gonna clean those pipes, and you can take that boiling water, pour it down the drain, follow it with a little bit of Dawn detergent, mm-hmm. pour more water down there, and it'll flush. I actually do this in my house every six months. I know I'm weird, yes. but it just keeps everything cleaned out in there. Because if you've ever seen. A scope of a drain? No, no, that's no. It's gross. <laughs> I prefer not, you know? Yeah, I was looking at one the other day for a friend of mine, and it's just disgusting. I have the same feelings of that as some medical procedures. Ooh, Mike is right. in Cleveland, <laughs> and he wants to talk about siding. Mike, what's going on, man? Well, I've got a small house that um, has siding, that is best at siding on three sides. Mm-hmm. It's a older house of late 60s. And 
I it just look, get look a little ratty about now, and I wondered what I could do. What What are you wanting to do? Are you wanting to, to remove it? it? Are you wanting to? Well, I understand there's a problem because it's that asbestos siding. Right. So I'd like to do it with a minimal of effort if I can. Well, you, um, I know there's lots of different ways to tackle this. Um, and you'll see probably the cheapest way that I've seen, uh, the cheap way is, is to not bother with your siding that's on there currently and go over it with a different type of siding. Yeah, aesthetically, okay. you could do that. Yeah. Um, you could clean it really. I mean, asbestos is solid. So that's you can take a power washer at your asbestos and clean it off really good and put in a really good viscosity paint, mm-hmm. that uh, a thick, thick paint yeah. on the outside of it. If you come in with a siding on the outside, mm-hmm. I'm going to strongly recommend that you – do your education on flashing around windows and mm-hmm. roof penetrations because the biggest problem I see with retrofit on siding is mm-hmm. that it's not flashed right. Correct. Interesting. Okay. Uh-huh. And, and, then, and I, was, I wasn't comfortable with, uh, you know, putting siding on top because I just didn't seem right to use that old stuff and put something new right, on top. Right. Yeah, I would rather not do that. Now, we've done some... Uh, asbestos removal, and there are some procedures, and they're not um, extremely difficult to follow. Well, and they're a lot it, easier to follow now that we've all been through the pandemic, if, uh, because a lot right. of them are the Everybody's same. Everybody's got the PPE. If, if, yeah. you're, if, <laughs> if you're going to remove this, Mike, you're going to want to take a water hose, and you're going to want to keep the siding wet. That way, it keeps your as, asbestos dust uh, to a to a minimal. Oh, yeah. yeah, the so, dust is the yeah, evil. That, that's right. So yeah. so wet it down. Make sure you have your proper PPE, and then to dispose of that is your next issue. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's got to be encapsulated. Your uh, sanitary landfill will tell you exactly how you can dispose of it. Yeah, that sounds like a kind of. A- Little more than I'd rather get into. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, uh, a lot. it can be involved, but but again, it can be done. It Sounds be like done. your your middle ground here may be what Pam recommended, yeah. which is clean it really good and paint it and sure. paint it. Yeah, because yeah. it'll I, last I think forever. Go, yeah, I think that's good. Pam yeah. is the only sensible one in the crowd today. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. why she's here. Yeah, right. yeah I'm the cheap one. <laughs> oh, well, that, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Appreciate it, Mike. Okay. Top viscosity paint would be the best thing, right? Yeah, I get to the paint store, and I'd, I wouldn't go to a big box. I'd go to a paint store yes. and get yeah, some we got a share with williams there you go there go you in go. there and talk to them about what you're and and then also talk to them about cleaning and what you're going to need to do to make sure because the biggest mistake i see people make on exterior paint is that they just don't prepare the surface very well right yeah, you guys sing that song every time i know that yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because, well, it's a very valuable song because the worst thing to do is spend big money on great paint and paint over algae and mold. Yeah, uh, it's, the worst it's, thing com- you can it's do. coming off. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be dumb, folks. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Mike. We appreciate it. Sir, appreciate it, y'all. Yes, sir. All right, we're going to keep going real quick. And uh, Mikey's on the line in Mobile and says she's got an idea about cleaning rugs without blowing up your uh, washing machine. What's up, Mikey? Uh, Well, but first, I want to say this, as usual, I mean, you guys amaze me with some of the programs, and this is one of the most amazing that I can use for my particular little life here. Um, uh, uh, Yes, the limestone uh, things, um, uh, just knowing something about the cost you know, ballpark of that, uh-huh. and and the asbestos things, um, uh, which I can use for my sister's property. Um, Good deal. Anyway, my, my two tips are, um, uh, for the rug things, um, and this came from, I come from a long line of um, low-tech queens, okay? Mm-hmm. My, grandma, my grandmother taught us early, take a plunger-type, uh, you know, a plunger, yeah. you know, it doesn't have to be expensive. It can be a very inexpensive one, mm-hmm. a five gallon bucket, put the, the thing in a gallon, you know, in that bucket, 
and um, plunge away like, you know. Old school washing machine. Mm -hmm. Old school washing machine. But then what I've discovered recently is um, uh, the, uh, you know, the the, uh, shepherd's hook type um, gardening stuff that you have. Yeah. Um, Put put the ones at the right height that you want and use them in conjunction with rubber-coated, TV, you know, along the sides, you know, as railing, mm-hmm. um, and ha- they hook on easily. They move very easily, even for people with um, upper body strength challenges like right. me. And um, you can adapt them for drying those sorts of things, and for always, you can bend them so that they also protect things during the cold weather. That's very cool. Mikey, do you have, have you made one of these? Do you own one of these? One of what? What you just described to us. The stand that yeah, you just described. Yeah, I, own, I, own, I own five or six. Okay, you, you've <laughs> got to take a picture of this and send it to us so we can get a good uh, visual to put out there for everybody to see what this thing looks like. I'll work on it because I'm working on the technological stuff and I will be listening to your show, uh, <laughs> the following shows, you know. Right, everyday tech coming up, that. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. You know, Thanks, Mikey. I thought Mikey was going to say, uh, you know, cleaning your rug is a good anger management tool as well. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you the hang it up outside. Broom hanging on a tree kind and of thing. And just yeah. wail it to death. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time for another break. And, uh, We're still looking to hear from you about your home improvement projects. If you want to join today's show, give us a call at 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org. We'll be right back. No matter if you use an app to start your car or still have a flip phone, Everyday Tech can decipher today's technology for tomorrow's solutions. Subscribe now to the podcast using any podcast app or the MPB public media app. (laughs) You're listening to Fix It 101 on MPB Think Radio. I'm Jason Klein here with Pam Pivas, ASHI Certified Inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl, and Licensed Contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. And you can join the conversation this morning by calling 877 MPB Ring. That's 877-672-7464. Or send an email to fixit101 at mpbonline.org like this person. Okay, we've had uh, a, a, a similar question to this before, and I think just because we live in Mississippi, this is going to happen to a lot of folks. Uh, hi, some of the mortar has come out between bricks on my front porch. We've had a question very much like this before. It's because um, it happens all the time. Because <laughs> it happens all the time, yeah. How do I fill in the areas without tearing out all the bricks and redoing the steps? It's like, well, We had this one like three weeks ago. Um, well, the problem like, is that we think that putting brick on a horizontal surface is a good idea. <laughs> well, and a lot of southern homes have brick stairs, you know. That, oh, I know. So oh, many it's southern homes. such a homes. bad idea. Right. Because uh, what happens is that the water gets down in there because mortar is porous, and it just goes down and in it, there. Right, and then, it, then it freezes, and then it pops the brick. And yeah. right. It's like a pothole in your steps. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, on our roads, the water but, gets down underneath there, and then... It, it's, it's, not, it's not difficult. No. It's it's a, it's a, it's 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 user friendly. It's homeowner user friendly to fix that. It is. It is. And you know what? Uh, believe it or not, believe it or not, even though it may scare you, you can get actual mortar that goes in there. Oh yeah. And you can just Absolutely. put more mortar in. M- mix sand, mortar, and water, right. and, and and you have your formula that you need to go in between those steps right and Um, and you you can do that it's it's not um as as pam has mentioned uh on the show um anytime you work with any sort of concrete like substance you're working with chemistry so do what you're supposed to do how you're supposed to label on you know on that so and i think if i'm not mistaken and we may have a listener that can correct me on this i think now you can go in to the big box store over to where the contractors division Mm -hmm. is sure and that's where all those products are you you can go there you can go to any brickyard Yes. And, yes. And, and, and pick up the color that you need. Right. If you will take them a sample of that mortar 
mm-hmm. will tell you what color it is. Yeah, they can match. Man, that that's for amazing. You. That's fantastic. Yeah, I don't I mean, even know they can do that. There's only a few colors. Right. So. Yeah. Well, and I think now you can buy a bucket that's only half filled. Mm-hmm. And it's like add water. Mm-hmm. Because if you're oh, doing something small, it may be. I'm, I'm not familiar with that, but that that would yeah. So you don't have to get reasonable. like a big. You don't right. have to work with a yeah, ton of a stuff. Bag or yeah, you yeah. can get a little bucket to kind oh, of that fix that. that would be that. great. And then let me recommend seal it. I mean, every year sure. just make that part of your routine. Now, yeah. with, with uh, and I'm going to use a brand name here so that everybody can understand what we're talking about. You're talking about like a Thompson's water seal kind of product. Yeah, for, for mortar. Right. Yeah. They, they, they make a product, and uh-huh. we've, we've talked about this. Yes. Big box stores have it. Uh-huh. It's called Siloxane. It's uh-huh. a great um, um, sealer for masonry products. Mm-hmm. Put that on there. Um, they, they make one that's not uh, slippery because remember right. you're, you're you're on your steps, mm-hmm. um, but but it's like Pam said, we are asking that brick to do something it's not designed to do. Right, hold water. So well, we're, it's, it's we're just laying not, it. We're laying it, it, on, laying a, it on, a, on a horizontal, and then surface. we get mad at it whenever it right. comes apart, and we're like, yeah. "Whoa!" Because it freezes and busts off. Right, uh-huh. and and those are mainly your your old brick. Uh, because that's what we build those out of, right? Because right? it looks pretty. I got a question uh, so. on that product that you mentioned, Jeff. Would that, if I seal that every year, is that going to help with it getting mildewy and yep. slippery? Absolutely. Really? Yep. yep. So I won't have to like bleach my steps every three well, months. Well, that's the reason your mortar's falling apart because right. you're bleaching your steps. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> Well, it's either that or green steps, you know, and, right. and slippery steps. Well, you know, if so. you seal your steps, you wouldn't have that problem. Well, no. see, that's, that's why right. we're here. That's right. Okay. That's right. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, Corrine in uh, Oxford. She's got a dryer issue. What's going on, Corrine? Um, hi. Hi. I've got um, two issues. My dryer has started um, squeaking as it turns. Um, and it, squeaking? it sounds like it. Yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. Hang on. Okay. I'm as it, as it turns, um, and it seems like the heavier the load in there, the worse the sound is. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering if you might have any idea about what that might be and how mm-hmm. to fix Got a yeah, we got a pretty good idea of what that might be, uh, especially you mentioning that it, it happens specifically on heavy loads. Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah. You know, we just, we just got through talking about something kind of like this. That heavy loads will tend to put a, a lot of stress on basically the bearing that's turning the drum. Um, on the and, circular motion, it gets all cattywampus. Right, right. Yeah. So, so, and we learned uh, through this thing I was talking about earlier this hour that that it's got to do with all of us uh, washing our, our our big heavy water soaked things like comforters and bath mats and and dog beds and things like that you know yeah um and and uh one of the thing that the uh the article writer mentioned is that if you continue to 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 wash these uh, these big load things in your regular residential washer expect it to to go bad after a few years well and that was talking about the washing machine and she's asking about her dryer uh, that's true the, that's dryer. the yeah. bearings are just wore out on the on the drum yeah on the dryer and another thing um, it could be is the Kareem, belt your yeah, belt maybe right. have it's, gotten too gotten pulled out too and it that belt can be replaced is it a squeak yeah, yeah. It probably uh, goes reek, reek. And it's probably how, how, <laughs> how, how old is this dryer? Oh gosh. Okay, you it's, you it's said it. Wait a second. <laughs> you said enough. Right, it's it's go, time. Please, Put please it out go. Of its, misery. go get yeah. it's well, and listen. We you know we 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 kind of joke about this. It, it's dryers are not that expensive. You're probably going to spend more money trying to get this thing fixed. Even if we can get parts, 
Right yeah, now, if parts you can get parts. is a yeah, big deal. Yeah, if you deal. can get the parts. You know um, what, though? And, and I think it's time to let that one go to rest and, and get another. Yeah, we've had uh, an appliance guy on here several times, um, and, and he always says that when we're talking about these appliances, I know when we were growing up and we bought our Kenmores and, and we passed them down through generations, that's, right. <laughs> that's not what we're buying anymore. And you're looking at about a seven-year life cycle for just about well, anything out well, there. Well, on the older you know, no, it used to be, let's fix it, let's fix it, let's, let's fix, fix it. it. Yeah. We've changed. It's not mm-hmm. worth it. We are a disposable country. Right. Unfortunately, like it or not, right. reality is what reality is. Right. But if you wanted to tackle this, you could, uh, like, I would Google the manufacturer, maybe get on YouTube and look at if other consumers have had the same problem. Mm-hmm. And then specifically look at the belt. Because if the belt has gotten stretched, I that's agree a with pretty that statement, Pam. easy oh, yeah. fix. Let me, yeah, it's. Uh, let me ask this: uh, What brand is it? Oh gosh, um, I think it's GE. I can go look real. Quick. You think it's GE? Because that would be the I, most wonderful thing it could be. Either that or Whirlpool. Uh, because both of those parts uh, or both of those machines are um they're american made and uh so if you're looking at whirlpool products that's what you're looking at if you're looking at say a samsung or lg korean made uh, i don't know when you'll get the part yeah yeah it is they are it is ge i just looked yeah well uh, all of your appliance stores in the world carry ge and whirlpool parts so yeah Um, research the belt uh, and and see if that because that I've done that on my dryer before, on my grandmother's dryer that was handed down to me from for generations. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I finally just upgraded because I got tired of fixing everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, my second question. Um, mm-hmm. I, I hear you guys talking about all the time how that you need to blow out the lint, even if you clean out the lint thing, the lint film every time. Uh-huh. Um, but my washer and dryer in, are in a small area, uh-huh. hard, hard to get to. Right. Is there any way to do it from the outside vent? Absolutely. Absolutely. They even make a kit for that. Well, you got to be careful, though. Yeah, but you see, can push you're, you're all that going, lint. You're push everything back into the dryer. <laughs> back into the dryer. Well, and well, that's what I thought, and then I could vacuum it out. It, well, it depends on which way it's it looks. going in the dryer. When you, you, when can, you get this kit, yeah. and, I, and I've used the kit several times, it, when you get this kit, it hooks to what would be like a, a, a drill, right? Okay? Okay. And it has several long sticks that you can attach to it, depending on how long your run is. But there's a brush on the end. The brush is not a round brush. The brush is made like a propeller. So the important thing is which way you turn that. The, oh, it uh, could auger its way out. Yes, it oh, can no, auger its I way. I hadn't thought about that. Yes. So, so it is an auger. It is an auger. So what you can do is you can put this in from the outside, and when it touches that lint, it will pull it towards you. Okay? <laughs> so, okay. So, so that's, that's awesome. That it, makes sense. Yeah. Yes. And it works yeah. so much better. I've tried it myself. These kits are, are 20 bucks at your home stores. It's okay. not a big wow. deal. Awesome. You, you know, this is the thing I love about Jason. He actually goes home and does it. And does right. these things. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I've got to watch somebody do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never thought about it being an auger. That's yeah. right. Me neither. Uh-uh. Just be careful. I mean, I I, all of a sudden, today. I'm seeing all this lint oh, flying all over Jason. No. <laughs> now I will say, you know, it's one of those jobs. It's like it, it's like cleaning your drain. It's not one of the happy jobs you get to do. But you know, I mean, yeah. wash your hands and have a good rest of the day. You know, I like oh, yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Uh, it's very important. I know. So, oh, it is. Yeah. Uh, I can tell you. Uh, I know that Jeff has said, you know, that was a chunk of his business early on was house fires. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, wow. and, and if you've got a, let me mention this as well. If you have an old dryer, you're going to have a lot of lint. Mm-hmm. That's the yeah. wonderful thing about the new equipment. It uses a minimal amount of water. And then, so yeah. that is, allows your fibers to stay put. Right, right. <laughs> but if you use a lot of water and then you try to dry all of that, you're trying to suck out a lot of moisture and it will 
literally pull the fibers and the stuff off your clothes. Right. And that's what causes your dryer vent to get all clogged yeah. up. Well, look, yeah. go get one of those little things. They don't cost a lot of money. As soon as you take it out of the box, you'll go, oh, yeah, I got this. It's, okay. it, yeah, it's an easy figure out. That sounds great. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Corrine. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Let's go ahead and go to uh, Susan in Meridian. She's got a question about that radon gas thing that I mentioned. Hey, Susan. I don't have a question. Oh. I have a comment. Yes, ma'am. Several years ago, maybe 15 years ago, my mother had the Loma Linda channel from Loma Linda University. She had a satellite. hmm And there were two doctors from Loma Linda, and you know they're excellent doctors. Uh-huh. And I remember I had never heard of radon gases till they mentioned it, and they recommended every day raising your window in each room, like I guess a fourth of the way, or ha- not half, but just a small amount, and let fresh air in for about fifteen twenty minutes. Huh. So fifteen twenty minutes of a window open each day. Yeah, in each room. Oh, in each room. So wow. I have done that for years, except I hadn't done it lately with it so cold, but I did even do well, it. Well, that's how it builds up, Susan. you got to go open your windows. <laughs> you got to. <laughs> but anyway, I just remember that. I'd never even heard of radon until they mentioned it. Well, yeah, it's yeah. not a big and deal here in Mississippi. It's, it's not really a, not. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not something we hear a lot of. But there can be cases around, and hey, if they're giving away free test kits, then there, you know. there was something, and it's just way back in the mind. A few years ago, it was on the news. I just I cannot get about radon. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's you know some of the stats on radon are really weird. Uh, uh, if it, check this out, more than. 20,000 Americans die of radon related lung cancer each year. Yeah. Wow. It, it just it, these are stats I just didn't know. Right. But but um so it's a real thing. Like I said, the gas comes from uranium. Yeah, and so. there are I got to I used to go to all these home inspector conferences. It's mm-hmm. been a minute since we've had one, but they actually train home inspectors to do this testing mm-hmm. and there are some relo companies that will not let you purchase a home without doing a radon, a radon test. test. You know what? You're exactly right. Yeah. Yep. I, I remember that now. Yeah, and so we have – I've had clients moving in from out of state where the relo company re- required a radon, and I had to – it's expensive to kind of get into that type of right, testing. Right, right. So I had to refer it out, and now the guy that used to do it has retired. So I don't even know. These free tests Sounds maybe – Sounds to me like you need to take a class. Well, mm-hmm. I don't know, because it's just we don't need <laughs> right. it here. You well, know? look, uh, if you're interested in that for your personal home, here was the, the, the story we talked about at the beginning of the show was the Mississippi State Department of Health is uh, giving away radon test kits while supplies last. Uh, and they're doing this in conjunction with Mississippi libraries, so you can get to a public place to get these tests. And so, they're little; they're like little petri dishes that you set out for three days. Really? Mm-hmm. And then you send you mail that off, and then don't you? you mail that yeah. off, yeah. and they will. You know, it's almost like because we do air sampling. Because right. one thing we do have in Mississippi is mold. Right. Is we will suck air through a spore trap uh-huh. and then mail that off and get it. Huh. Get a lab to take a look at it. So that's what these tests are doing. Right. I'm wondering if they pay the lab fee on that as well. I don't know. The, um, yeah. It seems like the Department of Health, it says partnering with the library system to offer the free radon home test. Anyway, if you want to try to pick one of these up, let's go ahead and give the uh, locations again. In northern Mississippi, you can pick it up at uh, in uh, Starkville, Octibaha Public Library in Starkville. You can pick it up at the Elizabeth Jones Public Library in Grenada. In central Mississippi, you can pick them up at the Fannie Lou Hamer Public Library in Jackson. You can get them in Madison County Libraries, Ridgeland, Madison, and Canton. In southern Mississippi, you can pick them up in West Biloxi Library in Biloxi. When are those going to be available, does this, it say? This coming week. Oh, okay. Yeah, awesome. so, so you know, I'm assuming that starts Monday. But, yeah, it's, it's this coming week. And it's while supplies last. So, you know, get by and get a free one. It's, it's a pretty cool program because, it, it, like you said, because it's not something that's on our radar a lot, it might be worth 
doing a spot check here and there. Well, you know? and if we have a listener that picks one up and goes through the process, give us a call Ooh, and tell us about that. That would be neat. Very cool. All right. Wow. That was uh, fast. Fits at 101 is a production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting Think Radio and is funded by the generous contributions from listeners like you. Our show was produced by Mr. Java Chapman. Our call screener today was Liz Gill. For Pam Pivas, Jeff Sammons, and I'm Jason Klein. Stay tuned for our Wednesday 10 a.m. program, Everyday Tech with Jay White. And join us next Wednesday at 9 for Fix It 101 only on MPB Think Radio.